Steve. By the science guy. Steve. 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 By the science guy. We went to the local eateries and watering holes and asked the cashiers there if they knew anything about one dimensional kinematics. Let's find out. We're physics students and we just have one question. Do you know the difference between speed and velocity? No. No? Okay, thank you. Have a We're physics students, so we, like, all, we all take physics, and we have to do a project where we videotape and ask people if they know the difference between speed and velocity. So do you know the difference between speed and velocity? No. No. Okay. All right. No problem. Thanks. Thank have a good night. Thank you. Oh, my God. It's Ekbar from physics. <laughs> oh! Oh! Oh, my God! <laughs> I choked myself. Do you guys, anybody know the dif the difference between speed and velocity? Speed and velocity. Speed and velocity. Anyone know the difference? No. Between a vector and a scalar? Nope. All right. Thank you so much. Sir. Have a good night. As you can tell, none of them knew the difference between scalar and vector, or speed and velocity, or, you know, for that matter, what really 1D kinematics were. That's what we're here to teach you today. Distance and displacement are two measurements in physics that seem to mean the same thing. Distance is how far an object has traveled, while displacement is how far the ending place that the object has traveled is from where the object began. For example, if I were to run from here to here, the distance would be the 300 yards I traveled around the lake. That's some science. <laughs> However, upon returning, my displacement is zero. <sighs> Here's another example of displacement. Minus here is going to go a full circle around the court, and then we'll see what his displacement is at the end. You see, Linus, despite passing all the way around the circle, has a displacement of zero. Free fall is when an object falls without any additional force applied to it. When an object falls in free fall, it falls at 9.8 meters per second squared, which is the acceleration of gravity. I'm going to demonstrate that here, but first, never forget to wear your science safety helmets. Here we go. Now that's free fall. Similar to how both distance and displacement have similar yet different meanings, velocity and speed also have different meanings. Velocity is a vector, meaning both it has direction and magnitude, oh yeah. That magnitude of that velocity vector is its speed, which is the scalar quantity, or the magnitude, of the vector, which is the velocity. So while the ve velocity has both the direction, the speed is the quantity of that velocity, usually measured in distance over time, like meters per second or miles per hour. Back to you, me, for a quick, exciting demonstration of how this wonderful property of physics works. This is a fun little experiment you can do at home. First, You'll need a little car. First though, what about our science safety helmet? Oh, sorry, of course. Whenever you're doing an experiment, you always need your science safety helmet. I'm gonna put this on Enrique over here because he's gonna be doing our experiment. All right, next, you'll need a timer and a pre-measured distance. Enrique, please take it over from here. So, I'm gonna be pushing the car and finding the average velocity or speed that it travels along the table. What you need is the stopwatch and a known distance. We have a two foot distance from the start of the table to the middle of the table. When I start the push, I'll start the stopwatch. 
and I'll stop it there. That would be the two feet distance it traveled, and it took 1.52 seconds to travel there. So, two divided by 1.52 would be our speed, and that would be two over 1.52 feet per second. Isn't that great? Acceleration is a change in an object's velocity over time, as you will see in front of you. The first example will be an object passing with no acceleration but a constant velocity. Next, we will have an object that has a constant non-zero acceleration. In this case, it's a deceleration. As you can tell from those images, the acceleration changes its changes the object's velocity over the time period that it is traveling. We can now combine everything we've learned so far into one diagram using acceleration, velocity, and displacement. You can arrange the diagram as if it was a ladder with acceleration on top, velocity in the middle, and displacement at the bottom. Then you use calculus to go between the different rungs on the ladder. You use derivatives to go up the ladder. For example, the derivative of the displacement is the velocity, and the derivative of the velocity is the acceleration. Or you can use integration to go down the ladder. So for example, the integration of acceleration is the velocity, and the integration of the velocity is the displacement. That's all. Thank you for watching. <laughs> Steve. Okay. Uh, the science guy. You good? You good? Yeah. Okay, okay, so. You know I'm just gonna delete it the second I get a hold of the camera, right? First, not today! And we could judge that the speed or the velocity that the car travels, oh, but you don't know the direction. Steve. But you do know the. <laughs> Probably not even record. You probably see in the both has the magnitude of the direction you're going and the speed, of, which means it has both distance and magnitude. Displacement and distance have similar yet distant meaning. It got like about four inches of mud over there. <laughs> This program was made possible by contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Thank you.